नमस्ते वेलकम टू ऑर्जीज पॉडकास्ट मेरो नाम लोरीना हो म ऑर्जीज को को फाउंडर हूँ अन यू पॉडकास्ट को बारे भन्नु पर्दा दिस इज अ शो फॉर एन अबाउट एल्डरली मेकर्स वेयर वी फीचर द अमेजिंग एंड एक्सट्रोर्डनरी लाइफ स्टोरीज ऑफ एल्डरली पीपल दैट कैन इंस्पायर एंड मोटिवेट द यंगर जेनरेशन्स यो पॉडकास्टमा हामी हाम्रा हजुर आमा हजुरबुवा ज्येष्ठ नागरिकहरूसँग कुरा गर्छौँ उहाँहरूका लाइफ स्टोरिज लाइफ स्टाइल पर्स्पेक्टिभ्स जीवनका रमाइला क्षणहरू सङ्घर्षका कथाहरू यी सबै समेटेर यहाँहरूसम्म ल्याउने प्रयास गर्छौँ अनि यी कुराहरू सुनेर वी होप हामी सबै केही जान्न सिक्न अनि इन्स्पिरेसन बटुल्न सक्छौँ दिस पॉडकास्ट इज ब्रट टु यू बाई नेपास एन अडियो भिजुअल कम्पनी लोकेटेड इन तेबहाल न्यू रोड and all our patrons who have contributed in making this happen if you too would like to be an ogis patron and support our work please visit our patron page www.patreon.com/ogis p a t r e o n.com/ajis ogis podcast ko yo episode ma we have 68 years old shiro muktan उहाँको बारे छोटो परिचय दिनुपर्दा शी इज लिभ्ड एन एक्सट्रोर्डनरी लाइफ फुल अफ एडभेन्चर्स स्ट्रगल्स लट्स अफ ट्राभल्स एंड शी इज मेड सिग्निफिकेन्ट कन्ट्रिब्युसन इन एजुकेशन सेक्टर शी इज अल्सो एन अजिज मेकर उहाँको ब्युटिफुल मैक्रोमी प्लान्ट ह्याङ्गर्स डोरी प्लान्ट ह्याङ्गर्स यिनीहरू चाहिँ अजिज प्रडक्ट्समा किन्न सक्नुहुन्छ एन्ड शी इज अल्सो एन ओथर अफ सिन इट अल डन इट अल हर्ड इट अल भन्ने एउटा इन्ट्रेस्टिङ एन्ड पावरफुल आर्टिकल अन अजिज ब्लग विच इज अबाउट व्हाट इट मिन्स टू बी अ वुमन दैट टु एन एल्डरली वुमन So let's welcome Shiro Mukhtan. Shiro ji, welcome to Ajis podcast. Hello Lorena. Thank you for having me here. Thanks so much for being here. So um maybe Shiro ji just for uh, the audience ko lagi ta pani afno parichay dinus na. Okay. Mo Shiro Mukhtan. I'm 68 years old. I live in Kathmandu. And I'm a person I think I have with too many varied interests. so i don't know where to begin but as we go along i'll let um, we'll find out things about uh, maybe i'll find out things about myself also <laughs> thanks to lorena who's been who's been pulling me out of uh, wherever i get into a state where i say okay i'm i'm going to be lazy now she says no we need some more of the hangers so there i am okay lorena's asked for it i'm making it and it's fun i love it i love it otherwise um i'm an ex teacher i won't say ex because i still teach uh i love to cook i love to bake i love plants anything i'm i'm at one with the universe chiruji you have so many interesting things about your life and i'm previously we've had so many conversations yes. and all kama to shuru garnu jasto bhaira so but then i was thinking may perhaps we could start about you as an independent woman you know uh, at 68 you're living on your own you know afa ekle basnu huncha which is quite unique especially for nepali society so perhaps you could share a little bit about what's your life like as a independent uh, single elderly woman for those women who are who are afraid of being alone when they grow old believe me it's not bad It's not bad at all. In fact, it's beautiful. All your life you've been taking care of people, catering to their um their demands, cooking the type of food they like, feeding them at the correct time. When you live alone and then you see how it all changes. The freedom is amazing. The fact you own the day you know you own the day that is the most beautiful thing you not expecting somebody to come at a certain time so you have to be prepared for that person with food or with uh, just your your emotions it's not there at all it does when you say you live alone you know normally people think of an old woman especially it will be a crotchety old woman with about 20 cats well life's not like that it's a beautiful life i wake up when i feel like i have my coffee i look at my plants water it talk to them see who's doing well who's not doing too well check my facebook check my mail 
maybe go to a little bit of YouTube. And when I feel, yeah, it's time for breakfast, I eat the breakfast I want. And then after breakfast, it's it's up to me what I do with the rest of the day. And it's great. So it's my life is good. I'm happy. And I think people who are living alone shouldn't be afraid. Enjoy it. Enjoy. So Shiroji, before you uh, started living alone, no? Paila dekhine, you've been living alone ki, paila you were with family ki kostutyo. I have a big family, in fact. I'm a single mother or have been a single mother since I was 31 years old. I have five daughters. So there's six women in a house, it is quite crowded. So it hasn't been like this always. It's life has been for me life has been such an experience that um, sometimes I wonder did it really happen to me? Did I really go through all that? that uh, it seems unreal at times but then i know i did go through it was it hard of course it was hard did i wish it not to be that way yes i wished it not to be that way i wish it hadn't been that way when you get married you don't get married to become a single parent but it when it did happen it's not a time to sit back and say oh my life is over by myself to i'm a strong person i do not accept defeat from anyone or anything so when i became a single mother it was a challenge okay i've got to bring up my five daughters and i'm going to do it and to hell with the rest of the world and that's what i did so shiroji how did you manage uh, financially socially pani i was i was in in india i was in darjeeling that's my hometown and when i became a single mother socially i don't even know what that means because i don't care about society never cared what people cared or what said or thought so for me becoming a single mother that happened to me personally affected me personally but what it did socially i don't know till now it's I'd never I've never thought of it or let it affect me but it was difficult in the sense to look after to bring up uh, children so I I did many things it was never of uh, you know I'm defeated I cannot do it was okay to this today the tomorrow okay what do I do I mean I taught I was a teacher I've been a teacher for a very very long time So I was still teaching when uh I became a single mother and then I used to bake I used to love baking ani my baking satya lai presents uh, birthday gifts then someone told me besnu thalnu ne paisa linu so I thought yeah why not and i took a little loan from my mother and um set up an oven a big oven this was in my mother's house her garden actually anitya got it i got some workers ani i started the bakery and then we i was doing breads and buns and pastries and cakes and what have you because it was for me opening the bakery was like my dream come true that is what i wanted to do i was a teacher i loved teaching but teaching wasn't the career i had ever imagined in fact um when i was younger when i was in college you've heard everyone says never say never believe me never say never because i said i used to tell everyone i will never get married I will never have children and I will never be a teacher and I was all three one after the other so never say never ever and while I was while I when I started the bakery um I had to I carried on with my teaching too I didn't leave that so I was working almost 24 hours but my my bakery did really really well I guess 
because I was good. And um, I was, I was, you know, I wanted to try new things. So it wasn't just the the bread and the buns that were coming out. Every Christmas I had the Yule log and the Christmas cake. Then uh, Easter came and I had the Easter buns. And then I started getting a big orders for cakes because I was doing sculpted cakes. I mean, I used to see shapes and I used to think, why can't I make that into a cake? I didn't know whether anyone was doing it because I lived in a small little town with hardly any connection to anybody. And the only magazine we used to get at that time, which I lived on and which was my, let's say, link to the cooking world and the fashion world and everything, was Femina. Believe me, Femina, um, Femina has been my loyal friend for a long, long time, since since the 60s, since I was in in school. So I I had learned a lot. Now, when I started making the cakes, it was I was a bit um, worried at first. You know, how was I going to get the shapes? So I just took a slab of uh, cake which I had baked. I didn't even have a stencil or anything, no measurements. I just thought in my mind, okay, this is what a guitar looks like. And I cut a guitar, then a, a car, a boat. And then gradually I went on to bigger things. Then I started making these round cakes with a full scenery on top. Sometimes it was, it was a summer scene, but mostly people like the winter scene because there used to be lots of ice, which was the cream and then the the fences and the little pond with the uh, the ducks and all you won't believe it but i would could ice a whole cake do all that in about 20 minutes a christmas cake would take about 10 minutes i'd become really good so i became more ambitious and i started making bigger things and one of my projects was a 10 kg train a 10 kg train of the Darjeeling train, the steam train, engine, only two carriages, the full works. Ani eti ramro bonyo malay maya lagi dino, but it was an order. And then I was because my house was on a hill, so you had to walk down a little bit to reach the main road, and I made about five people carry it in case they break it. And they'd bought a Jeep, so they put it behind the Jeep and took it. So I've made many, many, many cakes like that. And when I did, when I started my bakery, before my big oven was built, I was baking in the most prehistoric oven you have ever seen. At least I haven't seen that till now. It used to be a tin box, a big tin box, but it had... The, the temperature uh, on it, the knob on it. I don't know how that came there. And it belonged to my mother. I don't know where she got it from. And that had to, to heat the oven. I had to put it on top of the, of the fire. And the fire then was, I am talking, I sound so prehistoric, but really that was the time when we used coal for fuel. So it had to be the coal fire. Then sometimes the coal fire wasn't strong enough to heat the oven enough to bake the cake. So I used to build a fire of wood and um, I used to put the the oven on on that. And, but you will not believe the number of cakes, cookies I have made in that oven. I miss that oven. I mean, it's a sentimental... (laughs) Thing <laughs> where is that oven now? Do you still have I it? have no idea where it is. I think it broke down, it must have been overworked. <laughs> so, Shiroji, um, it's interesting that you mentioned that you never really cared about what society thought and how society perceived you. How did you do that? One again, like, any incidents, Tyoki, how if you ever were caught up in the social norms. I think I was a born rebel. Sometimes I like to feel good and say that about myself, <laughs> that I was a rebel. My mother was very, the normal, you know, social person. And she had a society and she had a friends. 
And she used to say, And I used to say, even at that age, I used to say, Ki um, Because I was genuinely surprised, It should affect her. I mean, my mother was a single mother because my father died uh, very early also. So, but she was always so worried. Why did it bother her so much? And I think that kept on playing in me. You know, and then being a person like I was the type of person who would always do what I was told not to do. It was uh, sort of, I had to do it. Kino, that used to be. Kino, Nagarno. So I used to do that. And then when she's, this thing of manchili ki bansa, ki bansa, it was, I think that just built up in me. But I don't care manchili ji so ke bannas. Mala ki kaanchi manchili ji bannas. How does it affect me? And I think it was because my mother saying it so often, manchili ki bansa, that I got into this thing of I don't care manchili ki bansa. Ji so ke bannas. And that has been throughout my life. I do not care what people say. I have never cared about what people say. And I still don't care about what people say. And if people dislike me, that's fine. Because I dislike so many people, right? Now. And if they don't like what I'm doing, too bad for them. Because my little stop, right? Now. I'll do what I feel is right. And it might not logically be the right thing. Because I've made so many mistakes in my life. Who hasn't? So I can't say that everything I did was the right thing. But everything I did was in complete disregard of what man Like for example, uh, since I was um, a mother of five children and going to, you know, marriages and weddings, it was, I was supposed to wear a sari. Why would I wear a sari when I'm not comfortable in it? Why has, why is it anybody's problem what I wear? As long as I'm decently dressed. Thankfully, it's changed now. But this, what I'm talking about, is maybe about, uh, say, 40 years ago, or uh, 30 years ago. Yeah, about 40 years ago. It was, Especially if it's a religious uh, ceremony, then it has to be a sari. Why? Why? I didn't understand. Where was the connection with the event and the sari? Is the sari... Our, our dress is the sari, our costume, is it my costume, am I comfortable in a sari? And if I'm not comfortable, then why would I wear it? It's not that I don't like a sari. I love saris I, and I love wearing saris. But any time the pressure on, is put on me that this is the dress code, that is where it stops for me. Maybe if they said no sari, then I would have worn a sari and gone. <laughs> So, Shiroji, for a woman to be still rebellious, you know, um, has there been any incidents in your life or people looking at you as a uh, woman who is a rebellious man? It's positively in the society. Mm-hmm. So how has that affected you or has it not affected you? You know, in the beginning, it was, I got strange looks. Like, I moved from India to Nepal with my five children. And that was the time I felt, you know, that women or people looked at me this, I was new to this country. I was there, a single woman with with, uh, five small children. And what was I doing without a husband? And I was uh, behaving like a normal person. I wasn't there with my head covered or, and looking all sad and weeping and uh, asking for pity. No, I was there with the men doing what 
men did. Nobody really came up to me and uh, criticized me. But what happened was there were people who were women, curious women, who would come up to me and say, Tapai ko husband ko ta cha? Tapai ko husband baira basna huncha? And I always said, Chaina, mera husband pan Chaina. Mera panjana chori cha? Ani mo chu, mera husband Chaina. And that was a very shocking thing for them. You could actually see the shock in their eyes. But slowly that question stopped. But then I started introducing myself wherever I went to say I am so and so and I don't have a husband and I have five daughters. <laughs> Which actually I had loved seeing, you know, looking at the expression on their faces. And then the, most of them pretended not to hear me. But I felt good saying it. It is just, you know. And I don't know what was there to be ashamed. What is there to be ashamed of if you're a single single woman, a single mother? I'm not a single woman, a single mother. Why was there a stigma attached to the fact that you don't have a man uh, who's escorting you or who is with you? Why should your life be incomplete if there is, if my children didn't have their father with them? It didn't make them any any lesser it didn't make me any lesser we were, we were all good we were fine we didn't need the the man to complete our lives and no no woman needs i'm not against marriages and husbands and wives no 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 if, if those who have husbands uh those wives who have husbands who care for them who take care of the kids you're very lucky cherish that but for those who do not, whose marriages have ended, who have to be single mothers for many different reasons, believe me, there is nothing wrong with you. There is nothing wrong at all with you. There's nothing to be ashamed of. It's just something that happened, like getting a pimple, which you don't want. So it's as simple as that. You work it out. Be brave. Beautifully said, Shiroji. Thank you so much for saying all this. It makes also Umsani uh, Iraq Kisimgu strength. Thank you so much. A lot of inspiration that we can take from you. So, um, Shiroji, let's talk about the education sector contribution. So, you've spent over three decades in the education sector. India, this Nepal. So, perhaps you could share a little bit about what that journey has been. I've uh, been teaching for a very long time. But like I said, when I was young, I said, I'll never be a teacher. And I became a teacher. And I think teaching chose me instead of me ch choosing teaching. Because <coughs> this happened just after I finished my uh, school. I was 16 years old. I'd just done my senior Cambridge examination in Darjeeling. And my grandmother and mother decided we'd come to Kathmandu for a holiday. My One of my aunt lives here. And uh, when we came here, my aunt had a friend who used to teach in St. Xavier's uh, school. And um, for some reason, she was ill or she had some problem. So she couldn't attend classes for a, about a month and she wanted a substitute. Otherwise, she wouldn't get the holiday. So my aunt said, you've studied in an English school your whole life. You've just finished your examinations. You go and teach. So I was very scared. But um, I went. Dorai Dorai Gwe. St. Xavier's school. I went inside. Class two. It was about class one or class two. I went teaching the Sajulethya. So I guess that was when it happened. You know that the teacher in me must have come out then. <laughs> anyway, uh, and very funny. Then lunch was uh, in the teacher's um, dining room. 
त्यहाँ गएर बसे आई एम द यङ्गेस्ट कोहीलाई चिन्दैन आई ह्याभ जस्ट कम आउट अफ अ स्कुल त्यही पनि कन्भेन्ट वे यू आर प्रोटेक्टेड वे एभ्रिथिङ इज इज सो लाइक प्रपर एभ्रिथिङ ह्याज टु बी डन प्रपर त्यहाँ डाइनिङ टेबलमा बसे त्यो खाना आई स्टिल रिमेम्बर दर वज राइस थियो चिकन करी थियो and another other teachers very quite kindly they served for me and i i put my uh, chicken like kanta le is to bhoche ko ta chicken flew off the table out of my plate out of the table <laughs> and one of the teachers says oh it's still alive tyo just the embarrassing moment mera life ma gaile bhako chaina hola But then that was the that was the first time I taught when I was 16 ek mahina padhaye this was the college occupancy after I got married then I was in India and uh, just like that I started teaching there ko schools ma english teachers are always wanted only since I was an honors in english only with education as my subject so अनि मैले इन्डियामा चन्डीगढ दिल्लीतिर कहाँ 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 पढाउनु थालेँ त्यसपछि इट केम टु वेर एभर वी ट्राभल्ड इन इन इन्डिया असम देन दार्जिलिङ सबैतिर इट वज पढाएँ बट आई फाउन्ड मलाई आई फाउन्ड मोर प्लेजर एन्ड मोर च्यालेन्जिङ टु टिच ओल्डर चिल्ड्रेन हाई स्कुल स्टुडेन्ट्स more than the younger ones it's not that uh, it's easy more the younger teachers teachers who teach the younger classes especially nursery uh, classes more the teachers are like hats off ones i would never be able to do that how can you look after so many kids the whole day the patience required the energy required each thing has to be done for them teaching higher kids there is what you learn any you tell them this page they know the page you don't have to sharpen pencils for them you don't have to open their exercise for them you don't have to hold their hands and make them write they are supposed to got sani ani that's why i found teaching older kids was so much easier and and they are more responsive and that was for me is very important i have to have a responsive class then when i came to nepal and i started uh, teaching all that was uh, was gone over here i mean uh, i taught for one year it was a junior school but the education dun system thyo that system was so wrong in my eyes maile jun deheko the maile jun um practice gareko it wasn't that the children weren't being taught education is something different education is not memorizing ani tyo ek mahina tyo ek barsha garera after that i will um, freelanced and then i started my own o level classes the o level classes shuru garda heri in my own house in one room with 11 students i did not know what i was doing i knew the syllabus because sine cambridge mai le kare ko the syllabus that i taught in india is a syllabus which is adapted from the sine cambridge ICSC ne this is the same same syllabus so i was familiar with the syllabus i knew how it had to be taught but what was i doing in a strange country going against the the sister education system and teaching teaching a new system altogether syllabus suru mata it was just in the house it was a private thing अनि नेक्स्ट डेदेखि द स्टुडेन्ट्स बढ्यो सो आई ह्याड टु रेजिस्टर माई क्लासेस 
अनि आई नीड अ बिगर प्लेस आई नीड इट टू रेजिस्टर अनि आई वाज स्टिल नॉट फेमिलियर विथ नेपाल एंड द ब्यूरोक्रेसी हियर सो त्यति बेला नेपालमा ए लेभल्स ओ लेभल्स आइ सके थियो य दिस वाज इन द लेट 1980स अ बुरानिल कन्टे स्कुल डिड हैव ओ लेभल्स एंड ए लेभल्स अरुको थिएन तर सेन्जेवियस को पर्मिसन थियो सेन्जेवियस ने कहीं थे अलग आई गट इन्फर्मेसन दैट आई कुड स्टार्ट द क्लासेस द ओ लेवल क्लासेस अक्जामिनेसन से सीन्स केम्ब्रिज यूनिवर्सिटी ने सेंजेवियस पर्मिशन तो दी रहा थी बट दे डेन डू इट अनासंग एक्जामिनेसन चाह सो दैट्स वर आई डिड and sur mata there were not too many students also uh, 11th year there were maybe 20 this but she uh, it was okay sensevias uh, ma then sensevia the principal sensevias uh, i rem- i forget who he was after a couple of years two three exams i think he told me that he's leaving and there's another principal coming who might or might not allow me to you know hold the have the examinations in sensevias as the examination center so i had to look for another place now i was working with british council but british council was only catering to a couple of students or three four students they didn't have a, a exam a center for to hold examinations so they said we cannot take in so many students and then um, the next thing was so they said ask puranil kanta so i asked puranil kanta and they said no we do not take private students hamra apne students mate hami garcha bahir ko students hami gardena so i was desperate i had children ready for the exams they had to sit for the exams they were registered to the examination kaam bada garaune so i wrote to cambridge university that my students do not have a place to do set for the examinations and buran kanta um, says their policy is no private students so thanks to the cambridge university who intervened and informed uh, buran kanta school and british council that since the understanding when buran kanta was opened uh, was by the two governments was that it was for nepali students to provide them with whatever help they needed in education and they let they said that i they told buranil kanta that you have to let the students sit for the examinations so that's you know my students had a place to go to for examinations which was a big relief for me so shiroji later you started something on your own right nepal academy kathmandu academy banera yes Yes. When it got uh, I had more students and it became a very popular place I got it registered as Kathmandu Academy which became I think surprisingly very very famous in Kathmandu. I mean in Nepal, in Singapore, in Hong Kong for the um, for all the people who were going abroad as diplomats and coming back to nepal for all these people it became very famous so which i am very proud of it was so much fun because i had so, such a um, varied group of students i had singapore bada ko students i had kaam bada ko students i had kaam bada then i had local students then i had students from who had studied in india and then couldn't cope of here so it was that was very interesting तर मैं नेपाल आर एटा अर्क कुरो सुने विच मेड मी वेरी सैड कई अरु काम पाएन टीचर तो कर सकनी टीचर तो बनीहाल एंड द होल वर्ल्ड इफ यू सी एवरी ग्रेट पर्सन एवरी पर्सन लाइक यू मी एवरी वन हु आर वी वी आर हु वी आर बिकज वी हेड टीचर्स So how can a such a big task be given such 
a low position like oru kampana bani teacher one and which is which is the mentality of the people raiser because when i had put out uh, vacancy notices because i needed a couple of teachers for science i think ani mirma i had a pile of uh, applications but there was one which a person i'll never forget i don't know who he was his application was um notebook unsa ni when you tear it you have the serrated edges this to notebook ma in a pencil application le ko and it was put in an envelope ani envelope dale ko se the stamp ko chho ma unsa ni that strip of paper where you glue you can glue it down dile dale ko firstly that was so impolite and not done but i still called him and then he comes to the office he looks at me then he must have realized it's a woman he's talking to so then his whole pose changed it was like he got slouched down on the chair put one arm behind the chair darasura la ko manche hai and then he sits and then i said um i said i don't think like you'll be able to teach our class because firstly english ekdam ramno hunu parcha and um, i don't since you don't have no understanding of the syllabus which is completely different our syllabus is completely different to what we have in the other institutions he said ha theja padai diula ni padaun ta je pani padaun saksha then i said no i don't think so sir i don't think you can manage it i'm so sorry and then he laughed you know it was like a uh, sort of a scoffing laugh ke and he says aur ke na bhai ni english to padai diun la ni and he's telling me the english teacher i do not trust i did not trust any other teacher and there were good teachers to teach english i used to take the english classes myself and he says to me english to padai diun la a man who can barely you know get a sentence straight so then i realized this is look at this social structure this he's saying this because he's speaking to a woman but i told him no you cannot speak english so you cannot be an english teacher a uh, kathmandu academy carried on for for many years we were in many places at balaju and but we were last at uh, delhi bazaar beautiful places beautiful experiences and uh, we had hundreds and hundreds of students who passed out another thing is, is i always keep popping into somebody who anywhere i go who comes up and says ma'am don't you recognize me i'm so and so which and and then they say Oh, we have always had we had such a good time in Kathmandu Academy, and we are so thankful to you. And that is all the the prize I need for all those years. And I have this um, uh, this which I used to tell my teachers to, like the the mediocre teacher, he tells. The good teacher explains. The superior teacher. uh demonstrates but the great teacher inspires so when you can inspire your students teaching is done we've come to sort of the end of the podcast antima do you have any message ke bhanna chahanu chha ki our listeners or like anything that you would like to add before we end oh um, in the end I'd like to give um leave with a message for for two groups of people people my age women my age and their children Now women my age I'm 68 and I'm sure there are many 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 of you out there who are my age older than me younger than me but who feel that this is the end of the world believe me this is the time when everything starts Look at me Every day 
I wake up when I when I wake up, yeah, I have this um, excitement of what am I going to do today? What am I going to make today? Or I have this project to finish. Now let me see if I can get another design, a new design. Women, mu buri bai, mu abo sok di na. Mere ta abo din sokyo, sok ek zai na. Abo ta suru baksa, suru baksa kira mene abo kosle hai erno par den na. Abo ta apni lai mati erno par sa, ki man par sa, ki ki logono man par sa. But at the same time, there is one thing that I must tell you. Hamro age puge pasi. Dherei I've seen dherei ladies haru, dherei women haru, dherei sickness ali, dherei problems by rags unza. Kena ke ailment unza, kena ke abo mopani diabetic ho. I've got high blood blood pressure, diabetic. But that doesn't keep me down. Malay Malay ke isu sum muda ina. Eu jo the diet tapar ko control ganos. Control ganu ma na kanu. Maili derei suneksu. You na kanu, tiu na kanu, ane tiu na kani o ina. Tapar active was nos. Little bit of exercise. Tiu exercise gor da heri. Euta the sugar commonsa, pressure commonsa, pain in the joints commonsa, and it brings up the happy chemical, so it makes you happy. Now for the for the younger generation, uh, I've seen it myself. I've seen myself that you make um, that the younger younger generation. Make the older generation maybe unknowingly. You're doing it unknowingly, but you start making the older de- generation feel so irrelevant that they don't matter. They're ignorant. True. In our age, we did not have the the technology that you have now. So you are aware of a lot of things. You are you have a knowledge of a lot of things. But remember, there is one thing you do not have. All your parents, your grandparents, they've lived lives. All of them had had have had adventures, had sadness, happiness, troubles, suffering in their life. No, there's no human being who hasn't been through that. And what it has given them is life experience. And you, the young people, with all your technology and all your your knowledge that is one thing you lack and you will not do not have it now however much you might want it you do not have it now you will have when you reach your mother father's age or your grandparents age and uh, it is very sad when i hear um young people you know Paje bojo ru kura gan thale bichi kei bhanyo bhane a chup lagera basnu chup lagera basnu tapai le kei tha chaina tapai le esko bare ma kei tha chaina supposing somebody was to tell you that respect for elders please and since i am a very strong uh, follower of ajis ajis group and what they represent and i myself being an aji i am a grandmother of five grandchildren so i mean i would hate to see that and i would hate to i do not like to see it and other happening to other grandparents and i've seen it the other day it happened in a shop i was in a uh, i had gone to buy some a uh, bread or something and this lady ani usko chhora pasal ma chhora rai cha and uh, she was uh, she was saying uh, she was telling that boy uh, euta bora arko orko shop but a leono banera lady was uh, aged she wasn't a young woman the lady le 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 dena chora bhane ule ke bhanyo testo kaam haru ma mo garne haina ma etro padera ya bora boknu ko lai baseko haina at ap chaincha bhane apai leaunu that was shocking to me is this what life has become now 
Is this what life is all about? I wonder. Thank you so much, Shiruji. Uh, we've now come to the end of the, our podcast. You podcast my idea number one. That my guest to interesting life stories. So my idea number one. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lorena. It was really good to be here and to talk to you about so many things. Uh, and since uh, I stand for women of you know, my age, I want to leave with a message. I'd written in my blog. Each strand of grey hair embodies the tears, heartbreaks, struggles, and pain that life threw at you. Each wrinkle is a survival li- line of life. Each holds a story, a laugh, a memory. Thank you. Big thank you to all our patrons and Nipaso for supporting us. Yaharupani, if you'd like to support and contribute to our work, please visit our Patreon page www.patreon.com/ajis. P A T R E O N.com/a j i s. And of course, if you're looking to buy some products made by elderly, you can go to our website ajisproducts.org. A j i s products.org. Or if you're listening from the US, you can visit our Etsy store, Aji's Products. Antima, please remember to like and subscribe our Facebook page, Instagram, and Twitter so that we can stay connected. We are at Aji's Products. Hosta, aaj ko lai eti nai hami or ko episode liye ra chitte nai aunye song. Until then, stay happy and healthy.